Hello, hello. Uh, welcome to developing on safe core protocol. I'm German, like German, but I'm not German. I'm Spanish. Uh, I work as DevRel at Safe, and today we're going to talk about the safe core protocol. Can you raise your hand if you have heard of it? Okay, pretty good. Pretty good. So there are so many questions like different terms and concepts that were uh, recently introduced, like a lot of them, like plugins, modules, the manager. Uh, there was even a white paper. Have you read it? OK, good, good. Today, uh, we are going to talk about the Safe Smart account, refreshing a little bit what it is, what are the different elements there. Then talk about the safe core protocol, what are the new things, the new components, and how they are connected to the safe smart account. We are also going to see some resources, some repositories where you can find the, co find the contracts, some um, applications that use it. And then we will see a demo. And if you brought your laptops, you can, you can also follow me and play with it. So let's start with the Safe Smart account, which is a modular account framework. There are different elements there, being the most important one, or the main one, the account itself. In this case, it is the safe contract. But then we can extend the functionality, adding different other contracts. For example, modules. Modules allow to extend the functionality by uh, triggering transactions that are sent to the contract and in a way that you could bypass, for example, the regular flow where the signers need to approve all the transactions. And with this, uh, you can, for example, automate transactions and do much more stuff. One example of a module would be a recovery module that could, at some point, trigger a transaction that replaces uh, an owner that was in the account with a new one so you can get access again. There are different elements, like the transaction guard. Transaction guards allow to uh, add extra logic when transactions are executed. So uh, this logic can run before and after the transaction executed is executed. And they can parse the transaction, all the properties, the data, like what is the destination, the value, and also see the state changes in the contract and act on it and decide if the transaction is executable or not. An example of a transaction guard would be an allow list guard that checks what is the destination of the address. Uh, this guard would have a list of addresses, and if the destination of the transaction is included, then it will be available to execute, otherwise not. And lastly, we have the fallback handler, which is a contract that can be enabled in the account and would, and would handle all the, uh, all the calls to functions that don't exist in the main contract but are implemented in the fallback handler. And this is very useful if new, uh, for example, uh, standards for tokens are implemented while you have uh, already your account deployed. You want, they require you to add new functions to the contract that you don't have them implemented, and you could do it that way. So this is how the safe smart account looks. I hope we, all, uh, we will all agree that modular smart accounts fail without three things. Interoperability, discovery, and security. Interoperability, because there is a risk of vendor locking if different uh, projects are doing their own thing then the, that are not compatible between each other, then the ecosystem will end up with a lot of tools and very fragmented. And also, there will be a lot of duplicate work won't be uh, reusable. Regarding discovery, there's no, uh, currently there is no central place where you can search or discover these elements like plugins, uh, etc., for smart accounts. And this also leads to a lack of distribution to users. And security, uh, we need to make sure that all of this is secure and the funds are not at risk. Now that we have seen uh, the Safe Smart account uh, a little bit, an overview, 
we are going to talk about the SafeCore protocol, which is a modular smart account protocol. Uh, some things first. It is in uh, version 0 0.1 alpha, so it's in a very early stage. This means that it's ready for, hack for hacking, but not for production use yet. So we expect things to uh, change and to break in the coming months. Also, while the protocol is meant to be uh, account agnostic, for now we will uh, focus just on safe, uh, the version is 1.x, to speed up the development. It is open source, and right now we are seeking for community feedback. It's the best time to do it, as we are still uh, working on it, and uh, your suggestions are very welcome. So this is how the safe account, safe smart account looks like. And now we are going to see how the SafeCore protocol is connected to this. So the, uh, instead of having modules, guards, and fallback handlers enabled directly into safes with, this, uh, with the SafeCore protocol, we will have a manager. The manager will be the element that is placed in the middle and will coordinate all the communication between these different components and the account. It will also, well, we, we have a safe protocol manager implemented that you can check. It will also access to registries. Registries, uh, a registry is a contract that can uh, define a list of modules, different elements that we will talk about later. Registries will have a, an owner. This owner will decide which uh, elements to include in the registry. And these owners can be like individual accounts. multi six, for example, if there's a council managing this registry. Ideally, DAOs would have their own registry and, or, or registries would be managed by a DAO. So they all decide together what to include or not. They will define some requirements for uh, developers that they need to meet in terms of security. And uh, we have the safe protocol registry implemented that you can check as well. And now we have the modules. Modules are uh, these external components that will uh, extend the functionality of the safe. There are different types here, and you will see some relations between these new ones and the ones we saw before. For example, plugins. Plugins are kind of an evolution of the modules we saw before in the account, as they uh, can be connected, in this case, to a manager and send transactions to the safe. The difference uh, between them is that plugins must be added to a registry, and uh, accounts would be to enable these plugins in the manager. Uh, and then the transactions will be sent from the plugin to the manager and to the account. While in the, in the safe smart account, we saw that uh, uh, the modules were connected directly to the safe. We will see uh, why this is beneficial later. So for plugins, for example, we have a recovery plugin that would uh, do the same action as we saw before. We also have hooks. Hooks would be uh, very similar to the transaction guard. So we can have here an allow list hook that will uh, check the destination of the, of the address for every transaction and act on that. We also have function handlers, which are similar to the fallback handler. And we have the signature validators and some others. Uh, in the future, we will be able to have uh, more, more different type of modules. Now we are going to see uh, different flows, like uh, adding a plugin to a registry, how to enable a plugin in an account once it is included in a registry, and then how executing a transaction from a plugin looks like. So let's start with adding a plugin to a registry. Here we have the different components, the safe, the manager, the registry, and the plugin. And to add a plugin to the registry, we just need a call to a method add module in our registry. And that's it. It looks easy, but it's not that easy, 
as this will be the most um, bureaucratic step, probably, for developers, as they have to uh, not, not just convince, but prove they are worth uh, to be included in the, in the registry. So here, the owners will decide if uh, they accept or not the request they get, depending on the criteria they, they decide. And then the owner of the registry can call this uh, method to add it. Now, once we have the, the plugin added to the registry, we can, as users from an account, enable them. So here, we would need to uh, call the safe to execute a transaction that will call the manager, the method enable plugin, and there we will pass the address of the plugin we want to enable in a safe, and a Boolean property that is called allow root access. What is root access? This can be true or false, depending on the uh, permissions we allow the plugin to execute. Uh, and this is very similar to when we are, if you are developers, when we write a command in the command line and you, have, you want to have some extra privilege and you add sudo before it. So, for example, if you have a plugin with root access, this plugin will be able to execute delegate calls. Otherwise, they won't be able to do that. Also, if you have a plugin with root access, you will be able to execute transactions where the destination is the manager or the safe. Why is this, uh, why do we need root access for this? Because if the destination is the manager or the safe, the plugins would be able to, uh, will have access to functions that are quite critical, like uh, enable a plugin, disable a plugin, adding extra owners in the safe or removing them. So we would only allow this if a plugin has root access. If they don't, they would be able to execute regular transactions. Once, uh, once the safe calls the manager uh, to enable the plugin, the manager will check if the plugin the safe wants to enable is included in the registry, because that is mandatory. Also, our implementation of the registry has uh, a property for its plugin that is uh, where they can be flagged or not. And being flagged, if a module is flagged, it means it's not usable. It's marked as uh, blocked. For example, uh, if there's a registry with multiple modules and somebody finds a vulnerability for, for one module, uh, for one plugin, sorry. Well, modules. Uh, this the owner of the registry will be able to block this uh, module for all the users, for all the accounts, and nobody would be able to, explo to exploit this vulnerability. This is quite an improvement because in the past, uh, in the Safe Smart account, where modules are enabled to safes directly, if there's a vulnerability found, then every account should be uh, responsible of disable their module individually, while here, the owner of the registry could help do that with just one action. Once we check if the, the manager checks in the registry, if the plugin is in the registry, and then also is usable and not flagged, the manager will ask the plugin if the plugin requires root access or not, or not to uh, store this information in the manager. So the manager will end up with information like this uh, account has enabled these uh, one or multiple modules with this uh, type of permissions. For now, we just have root access, which will be yes or no, but in the future, different kind of uh, permissions could be defined as well. And now we have uh, added a plugin to the registry, enabled it into, the, into a, an account, and we will see how to execute a transaction via the plugin. So here, uh, somebody will call a plugin, the method exec, for example, that will send a transaction to the manager. Two things can happen here, depending on the permissions uh, the plugin has. The plugin can call the manager, one of these two functions, execute root access or execute transaction, passing the safe address they want to send this transaction to, and the transaction. And here, this transaction object uh, can also have some 
uh, metadata of the plugin. So uh, later when the transaction is executed, some events can be emitted with this metadata and uh, the applications in the front ends will be able to uh, add more, to be richer with more information and with more context about the plugin and the transaction. The manager, once uh, it receives the transaction and the save the plugin wants to call, it will check if the, if the plugin is enabled in that save. It will, add the re it will uh, ask the registry if the plugin is added and also not flagged, so it's usable. It will check the plugin if the plugin requires root access or not, and it will compare that with the information it was stored in the manager before to make sure that the function that was called is OK and makes sense. And if everything is correct, then the manager will tell the safe to execute the transaction that was initiated in the plugin. Is it clear, or do you have any question so far? Yes? Great. Um, for all these components, we have interfaces, and there could be multiple implementations for them. So for example, f uh, the registry, we provided code or one implementation for it, and then uh, many people can deploy their own registry with that implementation, or even with a different one, as long as it uh, implements the required interface that is provided. And ideally, we will see in the future uh, lots of registries uh, in different contexts. So they list all the relevant uh, modules on that uh, topic. Yes? So in this protocol, um, do I necessarily have to talk to the manager? Uh, and then have the transaction back to the module? Or can I still pass the information to the OK, uh, I will repeat the question just in case. Uh, so you are asking if this uh, replaces the old setup we have. The, and the answer is no. This doesn't replace the old, um, the old setup. It's just an addition, an improvement, but both will coexist. Uh, well, let's see how the, how the next versions of the safe uh, evolve. But for now, uh, both can coexist. And in fact, uh, this one will uh, still uses the smart account to uh, connect the manager to the safe. We can see that later in the demo. But uh, yeah, we have another question there. Yeah, mm. sure. Um, is it always a one-to-one -one relationship between safe and manager, or can there be many safes for one manager? Uh, technically, uh, one safe could have multiple managers. Uh, yeah, this is getting complex. Uh, in theory, it's just a one-on-one -on -one relation when a safe has a manager that has access to a registry. But technically, you could have multiple managers. It's manager accessing to one registry. Or even, depending on the implementation of the manager, the ones we have just has access to one registry, so one manager, one registry. But depending on the implementation of the manager, it could access to multiple registries, so this can really get more complex. But uh, yeah, to understand it, uh, it's like one safe, one manager, and one registry. But this can grow. Let's continue, and then if you have more questions, uh, we can answer them. So as I said before, these uh, components have an interface, each of them, that need to, needs to be implemented. And I will uh, talk a bit about the plugin and the manager ones, which are the more uh, interesting ones if you are implemented a, implementing a plugin. So for the, for the plugin one, there are four functions that uh, you would need to implement, like name, version, metadata provider. This, uh, will we'll tell the one calling this method where to find the structure of the metadata for the plugin. And this can be uh, different things, like the name of the plugin, the version, or whatever. And then if the plugin requires root access or not. 
Regarding the manager, there are two functions that must be implemented, execute transaction and execute root access, as we saw before in the diagram. One difference between these uh, is that for the root access transactions, you, just, uh, you can just send one transaction at a time. However, for the execute uh, transaction uh, function, you can send a batch of transactions and all of them will be executed in the, in the same transaction. Also, uh, in the safe protocol manager implementation, we added uh, more methods apart the ones defined, defined in the interface, like some uh, management for, for the plugin. You can enable and disable plugins, get information from a plugin, and so on. Let's see now some resources we have with some repositories. There are uh, three repositories about the safe core protocol, and the last one is a demo. Uh, the first one, the safe core protocol, it is in the safe global organization in GitHub, and there you can find the contracts uh, we implemented, like the manager and the registry, like the safe protocol manager and safe protocol registry, also the interfaces for the different components that you would need to implement if you want to have your own implementation. Then we have the safe core protocol specs repo, also in the safe global organization in GitHub. There you can find uh, documentation about it, some diagrams, flows that are very uh, interesting. Also, I, I forgot to say, in the safe core protocol, you will find tests that are very useful to see how that works. And then we have uh, another organization in GitHub uh, that is 5A, like safe, for more, more experimental things. And there is a, a, a demo app, safe core protocol demo, that we will see in a bit, uh, where you can play around. There are some examples for plugins, and there is a, a safe app that you can try with some front end. Uh, there's a registry, and you can play enabling and disabling modules from there. Uh, the last one is the, is the URL for this demo, but uh, we will check it in a bit. Also, uh, if you have your laptop today and want to do the demo with me, we have a, a pop-up you can get uh, to be a kind of protocol tester at Berlin Blockchain Week 2023. There are some requirements you need to meet, like fill a survey to collect some feedback from your experience here and what you think about the documentation we have. And also, enable a plugin in your safe. If you want to scan this survey uh, to participate, you can do it now. And well, maybe at the end, if you don't have time now, I'll be uh, happy to, to provide this QR code again. Okay, so now it's the demo time. If you have your laptop, uh, let's open the, the safe app. I have it open here. You can go to app.safe.global. and we can create a safe in Gurley. Uh, if, you, um, if you have any issue, just raise your hand and we can uh, check it together. Or feel free to interrupt me if you don't understand anything. So let's create a new account that I will call uh, safe workshop on Gurley. I'm very happy that we have a relay working on, on Gurley, so you don't need funds to deploy it and even to execute transactions. We have five transactions for every hour. So right now the transaction is being executed and I will have my safe deployed on Gurley very soon and without funds from my side. Is it all good from the computers? 
Are you deploying a safe? Yes? OK, great. If you also have some funds on Girly, uh, once you get the, the safe deployed and the safe address, uh, it, it would be great if you can send just a little bit to your safe, not to pay for transactions, but to be able to execute a transaction that sends something. Otherwise, you won't be able to create a transaction if there are no funds there. That is not mandatory for the demo, as uh, it's only required that you enable the plugin and not execute a transaction via the plugin, where you would need some funds there to send something. But uh, if you are able to execute the transaction, then that would be funnier. So I will do that. I have my safe here, and I will send uh, some funds. If you don't have funds to send, I can give you some girly ETH. Uh, I will send a little bit. Uh, I know what happened. I don't have funds in my MetaMask, but I have another safe with some funds. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the thing is that I have funds in a safe, and I want to send them to the other safe. But using the relay would be fine, right? Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it was fine. I, I don't know what uh, what I did wrong. I, I had a, a safe with ether enough to send it, but I, I guess I I was, I was confused with something. It, it should work. Okay. Do, do you have your safe deployed? Can you raise your hand? Yes. Okay. Do you have some funds on it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now let's see the, the code of the repos that were shared before. I have them here. I can share the, the links again with you. These ones. 
if you want to take a picture, uh, to have them later. Uh, well, th there's no need to open any of them, but uh, because we don't need to program anything. But uh, I, I will show them a little bit. Yes, so in the SafeCore protocol, we have different folders. Uh, we have some contracts with uh, what I said before, the Safe Protocol Manager. You can see the implementation we have for now. Again, expect things uh, to change in the coming weeks and months. Also, the registry, you can find it here with the implementations of the functions from the interface. There are also some tests for the, uh, well, for plugins. There's a registry that is unrestricted, so anybody can add a plugin there without the, the action of the, of the owner of this registry, etc. Then in the protocol specs, you will have the, the diagrams and flows. And now we can see the SafeCore protocol demo. Here there are uh, contracts and web folder. In the contracts, you can see some implementations of different plugins for testing. Uh, for example, there is a relay plugin that works with Yelato that allows to uh, relay transactions. Then we have a plugin for uh, for recovery that replaces one of the owners of the account. We have also a whitelist plugin that you can check. And then we have the source, uh, the, sorry, the web folder here with a front end that is a safe app. Now I remember, you need to copy uh, the, the, last, the last URL here, the 5 and then save core protocol demo. That you will need to use it in your front end. Does everybody have it ready? Okay, so we'll add it as a, as a safe app. If you go to apps in the front end, then there is my custom app. I just added it before, but uh, you can do it as well. You can click on the Add Custom Safe App and provide the URL there, and then click the button Add. All good? Let me know if you have any issue with that. So now, if we open this, it will show us a, a safe logo rotating, and then there is a link, Show Available Plugins. Yes, here, if you go to the menu, apps, my custom apps, there's a button, yes, the URL is, the last one is 5.eif.github.io, and then save core protocol demo with hyphens. fivefave.github.io and save hyphen core hyphen protocol hyphen demo. And then you will see the app added here. So if we open it and click on show available plugins, we will see a registry with different plugins added from a hackathon and some uh, tests. Now, uh, I want you to enable the Relay plugin, this one. Can you see it? Yes, is there a button Enable that will create a transaction? If you see, before executing this transaction, it is a BATS transaction that will enable module and enable plugin. The enable module, something uh, uh, somebody before asked, is the manager replacing the old uh, setup? No, the manager here is added as a module in the safe app, in the safe smart account, 
So we need to first enable the manager and then enable the plugin there. So we can execute this with the relayer as well, with no gas needed from our side. Sign the transaction. It failed for some reason. It's just awaiting execution. No, but uh, okay, I will try to execute it with uh, funds, but I, uh, this is weird. It looks like it's now processing. Yes. Were you able to enable the plugin to execute the transaction? Yes? Great. OK, now if you go to, uh, to the settings and go to modules, you will see the safe account modules there. Yes, that is the manager. It also, if you want to go to Etherscan, to this contract, and read it, there are multiple uh, methods there you can check. One is, is plugin enabled, and there you can uh, copy paste the safe address and the plugin address. The plugin address is uh, in the well, it doesn't matter. You can take it by yourself uh, if you want to play with the contract functions more in detail. But uh, the plugin is added to the manager, and the manager is enabled in the, in the account. So now we go back to the, to the demo app. And uh, because of the metadata of the plugins, we can have a link that is pointing, as a metadata of the plugin, we can have a link pointing to the front end for that plugin. And the Relay plugin has one link here on the right that will open an interface to Relay transactions. So we can define, uh, for example, a max fee uh, of 0 0.1. This is just the, the logic of the, of the plugin. And what does this plugin do? This plugin works with Gelato and will allow to uh, send a transaction. You can call the plugin, send a transaction, and it will be relayed. You can have the check the code here in the SafeCore protocol demo, contracts, plugins.sol, and it is this one, the relay plugin. So this plugin will send the transaction to the safe account, and the safe account will uh, send the transaction to the Gelato relay. So the, the transaction will be executed, and also the safe from the funds that are inside, it will repay the the executor, or it will send a, the fees to the fee collector from Gelato. How is it possible to deploy this fee token of an address that only contains that fee? Sorry? The fee token here yes? has an address that's only made up of fees. What do you mean? That, that, that is the, the token you want to use to repay the the relayer. Ah.
Okay, I, I was not understanding the questions. Yes, this is a list of tokens, and then if it's the native token. Uh, so now we don't have uh, pending transactions to relay, but we can go to the here to create a new transaction uh, to send tokens. This is why you need some funds in your safe. This is not required to get the POAP, but uh, we can try this. I will send it to myself. And instead of executing it, I will just uh, sign it. So we can execute it via the plugin. I'm just preparing the transaction. OK, it was added to the queue successfully. We can see it here. And now, uh, I guess we have to refresh this. Yes, we have a, a list of one items for the pending transactions that we can relay. So the transaction, it's been relayed. It will be executed by re the relay. And then in the in the transaction list, we will see the transaction that I executed, sending some uh, funds to myself, and then how we are paying the fees to the fee collector. So if we go to transactions, to the history, now see here, we see that I was uh, sending some girly to myself, and then paying the, the relayer. So this was an example of a relay plugin, but then uh, we can have many plugins implemented, uh, listed in a, or added to a registry. With the metadata, we can add some uh, information, like a URL pointing to the front end for this plugin. Uh, and then applications would be able to read this metadata, like this uh, safe app is doing, and allowing users to open it and play around with the plugin. How I use the plugin? Yes. I have a transaction prepared. Ah, there's a button. Uh, you need to refresh the front end. Okay. Okay. And there, at the bottom, you should see one transaction. Yes. And a button relay. Oh, you need to go to the registry again and find the, this, you mean? OK. Then here. No? Is it good? Sure, it's relaying. It's relaying. Okay, okay. It, it takes a, a little bit. Then uh, that was the the demo. Uh, feel free to let me know if you had any issues, or your feedback as well is very welcome. Here you have the slides. If you want to check them uh, later at any time. We can uh, talk to us on Twitter, at SAFE. Check our docs on docs.safe.global. We have Discord, a forum. And thank you very much for attending this workshop. And well, thanks. <laughs>
and can there be more hooks in the future? If we will allow to have different hooks connected all at once so different checks can be executed? Yeah. Uh, there's nothing uh, preventing us to do it. Uh, I guess it's just a matter of priorities. Here, the good thing about the protocol is that the interfaces are, defining, are defined and uh, sorry, here for example, hooks are called from the manager. So the flow would be there's a plugin, the plugin calls the manager, the manager checks if the plugin is okay, and it will also check if there are hooks that need to be added to the registry and all of that. And then if there are hooks, the manager will call the hook. Depending on the implementation of the manager, if it allows to have just one hook or multiple, uh, well. But that, we are not there yet in alpha, right? Sorry? Alpha is not there yet. Uh, no, right now there's just one, one hook. Regarding transaction guards, I know, uh, I know a project that implemented uh, a guard that allows to plug multiple guards and call them in a loop, uh, but yeah. Like you don't have to even have a loop, you can have a chain of responsibility pattern where you basically have your guard call the next guard and that guard call the next guard and it's outside of then the safe core protocol, it's just up to you how you stack them up. It's up to you as the developer of the guard what you, how you chain them. Also, one, one interesting thing that I didn't mention in the workshop is that uh, with the preview setup, when you were implementing modules, it, there was this decision of, do I implement this module just for one account or with a data storage that allows to have multiple accounts connected? For example, the, the allowance module we have allows to have multiple uh, accounts to reuse the same deployment of that module, but there were other modules where the account needed to deploy one uh, instance of the module to use it. Here, we are making mandatory to deploy uh, modules that are reusable, but many accounts, because they will be added to the registry, and then, uh, well, that's it. <laughs> Is there any other question? Also, we have our booth uh, downstairs. Feel free to come whenever you want. We will be there. Thank you again. Thank you.